Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Throughout the history of warfare, aircraft have played a decisive role in shaping battles. While they are typically armed with rockets and missiles and seldom rely on their guns, the Gatling cannons they carry remain some of the most formidable weapons ever mounted on aircraft. Today, we explore the intense and precise process of reloading U.S. fighter jets with thousands of powerful rounds in just minutes. In the 1970s, the appearance of the Soviet MiG-25 Foxbat spurred the United States to develop a countermeasure, leading to the creation of the F-15 Eagle, an air superiority fighter that soon became legendary. Later, the lighter and more agile F-16 Fighting Falcon was introduced to complement the F-15 in multi-role missions. Both aircraft are equipped with highly advanced weapons such as the AIM-9X Sidewinder and AIM-120 AMRAM, Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile. In addition, they carry the M61 Vulcan 20mm rotary cannon, a six-barrel Gatling gun capable of firing at astonishing rates, making it ideal for close-range dogfights and ground strafing runs. M61 Vulcan inspections are carried out every 15,000 rounds or once every 18 months, taking around 31 hours to finish. Armament flight airmen work in two teams across eight-hour split shifts, ensuring every component of the weapon that enters the shop is thoroughly examined and certified safe for use. To load the complex Vulcan, a specialized loading device is employed. Known as the Universal Ammunition Loading System, UALS, it is designed to load and unload 20mm ammunition for F-15 and F-16 fighter aircraft. Using a motorized drive, the system moves ammunition from storage containers into the aircraft's M61A1 Vulcan Cannon, which holds about 940 rounds on the F-15 and 511 rounds on the F-16. This Vulcan cannon system is capable of firing up to 6,000 rounds per minute. During loading, the ammunition passes through guide chutes as the feed mechanism cycles, ensuring each round is correctly positioned. To prevent jams and misfeeds, the process must be closely supervised. Unloading reverses the cycle, safely extracting rounds from the magazine. The UALS manages both live and training ammunition under strict safety protocols. During UALS operations on F-15 and F-16 aircraft, rigorous safety measures are enforced. Weapon safety pins must be installed, and the aircraft's electrical systems verified as safe. Ground crews wear anti-static wrist straps to prevent electrical discharge near ordnance. The loading area is designated a no-loan zone, requiring at least two qualified personnel.
safety observers monitor the entire procedure, while a dedicated operator keeps watch for any gun malfunctions. Clear communication and precise verbal coordination are mandatory. Emergency tools and systems, including ammunition handling gear and fire suppression units, must be readily available. Before loading begins, the gun system must be secured with the breech locked open and feed mechanisms verified clear. Every action follows detailed technical orders and multiple verification steps. During unloading, the UALS reverses the ammunition flow, carefully withdrawing each round and checking for damage or link issues. Drive systems, feed chutes, and control components undergo daily, weekly, and monthly inspections. Technicians check chain drives, sprockets, and guide rails for wear, service lubrication points as required, and perform diagnostic checks on control electronics. Safety interlocks are tested, and loading cycles logged for preventative maintenance. Damaged parts must be replaced before returning the system to service, with all maintenance and inspections properly documented. Depending on the type of ordnance, weapon loading can be simple or complex. Loading the AIM-9 Sidewinder missile, for example, requires a minimum crew of three. After confirming safety pins, at least two loaders manually lift and carry the missile to the aircraft. Team members guide the missile's lugs into the LAU-7 launcher rails, ensuring perfect alignment. The missile umbilical is connected and proper seating verified before removing handling gear. All fittings are torqued and secured as specified. For heavier munitions like JDAMs, Joint Direct Attack Munitions, crews employ the MJ-1 bomb lift truck, commonly called the Jammer. Its hydraulic arm positions the weapon precisely under the aircraft's hard point, where operators use fine adjustment controls to align the lugs with bomb racks. Once properly seated, arming wires and umbilical connections are made before removing the jammer. The Boeing AH-64 Apache stands as one of the most recognizable and formidable attack helicopters ever built. First introduced to the U.S. Army in 1986, this legendary aircraft carries an arsenal of guns, rockets, and missiles. From tanks and armored vehicles to aircraft and infantry, the Apache has engaged nearly every kind of enemy across multiple combat zones. Mounted beneath the Apache's forward fuselage is one of the most powerful aircraft-mounted guns ever built, the M230 chain gun. This single-barrel, electrically-powered autocannon fires 30 mm rounds at ranges up to 4,000 meters.
The immense power of the Apache becomes clear during the reloading process. It can carry up to 1,200 rounds, including high-explosive dual-purpose and incendiary types, all of which must be hand-loaded with great care. The helicopter also features rocket pods on each winglet that can house various 70mm Hydra, CRV-7, or APKWS air-to-ground rockets. Even during training and live fire exercises, the devastating strength of these weapons is unmistakable. Beyond rockets and the 30mm cannon, the Apache can be fitted with an array of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missiles. These are mounted on four pylon stations located on its wings. Some models also feature wingtip hardpoints capable of carrying twin FIM-92 Stinger missiles. Most commonly, Apaches are armed with AGM-114 Hellfire and AGM-65 Maverick missiles. The Hellfire, weighing only 100 pounds, is famed for its destructive impact, capable of obliterating armored vehicles or enemy bunkers with a single strike. Despite its combat effectiveness, the Apache has a relatively short range. Its operational combat range is around 300 miles, with a ferry range just above 1,100 miles. Because it frequently operates from remote forward bases, field refueling is a vital task for Apache crews. This is typically handled by a mobile fuel truck that pulls alongside the helicopter and connects a hose for rapid refueling, often while the aircraft's engines remain running. The entire process takes only a few minutes allowing the Apache to return to mission duty almost immediately. To stay prepared for real-world operations, Apache crews regularly take part in aerial gunnery and live fire training. Though these exercises are costly, the U.S. military considers them essential for maintaining pilot proficiency. The 30mm cannon is controlled by the co-pilot, who can swivel the weapon for pinpoint targeting. Each round leaves the M230 at 2,600 feet per second delivering immense destructive force upon impact. Most Apache helicopters carry fixed rocket pods, commonly loaded with Hydra 70 rockets. These are usually unguided for air-to-ground use, but can be fitted with a range of warheads and precision guidance options with an effective range exceeding 8,000 meters. These rockets travel nearly as fast as 30 millimeter shells and can devastate vehicles, fortifications, and enemy positions upon impact. The power of the United States Navy is recognized worldwide.
Its vast fleet and diverse vessels are symbols of its global reach, and among them are the equally formidable submarines. The U.S. submarine force comprises four active nuclear-powered classes. Ohio, Los Angeles, Seawolf, and Virginia. Each carries a diverse arsenal of torpedoes and cruise missiles, enabling missions from anti-submarine warfare to intelligence operations and precision strikes. Supporting this capability is a highly trained crew that works tirelessly to maintain these complex systems. The process begins with torpedo loading. While docked, specialized cranes transfer munitions onto the submarine's upper hull section, where external hatches or access ports allow crew members to load them into the vessel's internal racks. Given the potential hazards, this operation demands extensive training and strict adherence to safety procedures. Stand by. Mark. Once stored inside, the crew prepares the torpedoes for deployment through a detailed, coordinated process. The breech door in the torpedo room is opened, the weapon is placed in the tube, power is activated for warm-up, and fire control programs are uploaded. Once the launch command is given and safety interlocks confirmed, high-pressure water is forced into the tube, propelling the torpedo with tremendous force. The immense firepower aboard military aircraft, helicopters, and submarines represents only part of the story. The rest lies in the people, precision, and procedures that keep these weapons safe, dependable, and ready at any moment. From the intricate mechanics of the UALS and the rigorous inspection cycles of the M61 Vulcan to the careful manual loading of Apache munitions and the methodical preparation of submarine torpedoes, every action relies on skill, teamwork, and discipline. Modern weaponry embodies decades of innovation and battlefield experience. While their destructive power is awe-inspiring, it's the systems and people behind them that transform raw force into reliable capability while minimizing danger. Whether at an airbase, on a carrier deck, or deep below the ocean's surface, the technicians and ground crews remain the unsung heroes who keep these machines flying, fighting, and returning home. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.